Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to show you Randek and how you can use it on your Kubernetes cluster. I was using Randek for some time already, but at that time uh, there was not even an official container image available, not to mention the Kubernetes chart. But things change a lot and now you can quite easily install it on your Kubernetes cluster. I also added some extra things on top of existing Randek Helm chart. And I, in this video I will show how it all ended up. There will be three parts. In the first one I will show you what is Randek in general, what it can offer in Ops world. Then there will be a short demo of Randek itself. And the last part will be just a deeper insight in the changes I made to the chart so that you can understand what I did exactly. And maybe you can also add your own ideas in a similar way. Alright, so what is the general idea behind Rundeck? If you try to draw a path to be very efficient in daily activities or operations in general, uh, there will be at least three stages that can be achieved. So first one is a manual work, where you just do something here, change something there. You do it over and over again whenever it's needed, uh, which is obviously not very efficient and uh, error prone. Then there is the automation stage where all those steps are placed in some script maybe or some procedure and you can basically run it with one shot. This is also stage which is like the goal in many situations. So we have a lot of manual work, we want to automate it, uh, but actually it's not the end uh, because there is another step which is like the most efficient way of, of doing things, which is self-service. So it's not only that you have script that does the thing, but you can actually give it to end users or some colleagues, some peer administrators, and they can run it efficiently, not necessarily knowing how it works and uh, not necessarily breaking things around. And there are at least four things that needs to be achieved to uh, be able to move towards self-service. So first of all, it's uh, accessibility or interface. You need to basically have some way to interact with those procedures or those scripts. Then there is access control, because at some point we do are, we are doing uh, administrative tasks, but they, are, they can be executed by end users, so they shouldn't be able to break the system. The next one is the audit, so you should be able to view who did what. And the last one is operations review, so all the people engaged in the system should be able to review the operations. Uh, it would be great if the, all those steps uh, our version control so that it can be reviewed and followed between different versions. And this is exactly what Randek is providing. Before we move on, I'd like to show you what was the base for my changes. So first of all, it was a render official uh, container image. Uh, the only change is that I added kubectl binary there uh, just for, for the demo purposes. Then there was a Randek CLI uh, container image. Uh, made by Thomas Ferreira and in this case I just added a small script that is just waiting for the Randek API to be up and running. And the last one is the uh, official Randek Helm chart uh, which is uh, published in Helm charts repository in incubator folder and uh, in this case I made a little bit more changes uh, mainly just to uh, implement this uh, job waiting for Randek uh, to be up and running and then in this job Randek CLI can be executed to do some uh, setup of Randek or some uh, basic configuration. And all of those changes were published in my GitHub and you can find the link uh, below. Okay, moving to the demo part, I will just uh, try to uh, install Randek without any extra settings and it will be exported via ingress. We can even check what was the uh, actual settings used by Helm. So there is nothing special. We are just defining the ingress and telling uh, Kubernetes how to expose Randek. And then we also need to pass the Randek grades URL, which tells Randek uh, under which host it is working basically so that uh, any uh, anything that is executed in your browser knows that uh, it, it's uh, uh, running on this particular host. We can check if all the pods are up and running. And 
seems it's okay so we can now switch to the uh, browser and try to reach run deck okay we can log in there and uh, the default credentials are admin admin and we should see the run deck ui uh, so there is not much there because we, we didn't define anything so all the work in Randek is uh, grouped in projects, so let's first create our project. We can call it main project, for example. We can assign some labels, uh, add some description uh, if you want. Uh, there are some extra settings also here, but for now it's just fine to be just bare minimum project. So I will hit create. And now we we have a lot more things to configure here. Uh, so first of all, there is a project dashboard uh, that is showing uh, history of job execution. Then we have jobs part, which we'll be exploring in a second. Uh, there is also a notes section. And if you work with Ansible, for example, uh, yeah, it, it will be nothing new for you. So Randag is also defining notes on which it is working. By default, there is one node defined, which is the Randek host itself. And you can see it here. You can also run direct commands on, on the nodes. So you can just switch to a particular node and write something, uh, write some command that you want to execute there. There are activity part, which is also actual execution of, of jobs. And last one is a project setting. So anything you can add or configure on project level itself so for now let's go to the jobs and create uh, the first really simple job what we want to do is just try to run kubectl from run deck so we will call it get pots uh, we will skip the description but in workflow we would like to define some steps so first of all, you, you define options, so you can also uh, ask user to provide some parameters to job execution. Uh, but in this example, I will skip it. I will just define script type of workflow. You can treat it as a bash script that is uh, executed via Randek. But you can also use some plugins for Ansible, for example, and there are multiple other plugins available. But let's move to the script. And here we can just pass the steps or lines of code that we want to execute. So first of all, I will pass the, the alias I created for kubectl. So it is using the binary I added to the Randek image. And it's in temp tools kubectl. Uh, and what I'm using here is I'm passing the uh, token, Kubernetes token, uh, to the kubectl command. Uh, as you might know, all the pods that are started on Kubernetes cluster has a token added uh, to its file system uh, and it's a token for the service account that was running this uh, particular pod. So basically we have all we need to run kubectl and connect to the cluster API directly. So now we can just run like kubectl get pods and that's it for now. So we have our uh, our job defined. Uh, we need to first save it here and then create it. Just remember if you edit jobs in Randek, uh, it's often like this that you need to first save the, the part with the code and then save the whole uh, job. I forgot it many times and uh, you lost your changes basically. So just remember to add to, to do the save twice. And now we have our job, we can uh, actually run it. And we should see now that it was executed on run deck node and the script was okay. We can even view uh, what was the output and we can see that uh, it was executed in, in the same namespace where run deck itself is installed. So we, we are seeing our pods there. Nice thing is that uh, we shouldn't actually add those jobs by hand. 
it would be really great if we could just keep it in some version control or in some uh, git repository and thankfully Randec has this functionality we can just configure the SEM plugin and we can just tell Randec to import all the job definitions from git repository and add it to the project and this is what we will do in the next step I will not configure it here manually because this is exactly what also I added to the helm chart. So let's switch back to the command line. Uh, I will first delete the current deployment and I will run another one, but this time with uh, some extra parameters. So let's check what actually changed. Uh, so all the uh, all the configuration at the top is uh, pretty the same. Uh, what I did is, as you can see in Randex setup, I've added some extra steps. All those steps will be uh, executed by by the job that is uh, running Randex CLI. So this RD is the Randex CLI command that uh, you can use for uh, executing uh, some actions on on Randex. Uh, without a web UI, which is very useful if you want to do some configuration before actually using Randec, and this is how I will be using it here. So what I'm doing is first creating project uh, with the name main, and then configuring this SCM import. So basically I'm pointing to my GitHub repository, defining a file pattern with the exact folder where the Randec jobs definitions are placed and uh, then I'm just using this import, so defining import and then importing all the Randec jobs. So what we expect is that whenever Randec is started we should have all the jobs already there imported in the newly created main project. So let's check again if it really works like this. So I will just reload the Randec once again. We need to log in again. And now as you can see we already have the main project created, which is great. If we go there and in check in jobs, you can see that we have already two jobs defined. And so the get pods is exactly the same I, I was showing already, but we have new job named create namespace uh, so let's not run it now and just check what it is doing so we can now edit this job and just check what is the actual workflow so in general what we, we are trying to achieve is to have the uh, the, the Randec job uh, create new namespace uh, create service account in this namespace and just generate uh, cube config that can be used by some external user. So again I'm using this uh, um, token from the file system and defining some uh, extra parameters. What I need to pass here is the Kubernetes API endpoint. You can take it from multiple uh, places. There is even uh, endpoint uh, passed as environment variable in, in the pod, but it's uh, internal IP, so in my case it won't work, so I just need to pass it by my own. I could also pass it as a parameter to the job, probably, uh, but just to have, you know, the limited number of, of options uh, when running those uh, jobs I will just hard code it here I'm just replacing and then the endpoint and as I said all the next steps are just doing what I mentioned and at the at the end we should see the generated cube config so let's save it here save the job And we can now try to run. So in here, I need to just pass the uh, the name of the namespace I would like to uh, create, and we can run the job. And it's already finished. As you can see, we should see the output keep config here, but it will be a little bit difficult to copy. So I will first go to log output and then 
view it as text. And here we have our cube config ready to be used. And in command line, we can just pass it into the file. So let's place it in my cube directory and we can call it run deck. I will pass it. And now let's switch context to, to this one. And we can actually try to get bots from using this uh, newly created cube config. And it's working, it's not complaining about any uh, wrong endpoints or any similar things. So kubeconfig is working fine. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you is the changes I made to the around the Helm chart itself. Uh, just to be fully transparent, uh, if you'd like to actually use it or make some other changes there. Um, so first of all, I removed completely nginx uh, container from, from this deployment, um, but uh, I know that uh, it was used basically for packet forwarding, um, but as I understand, uh, service is already providing uh, exactly same functionality, so um, I think it's not necessary. Then I added all those things connected with um, token generation and uh, assigning token to the API. So first of all, I needed to define uh, some extra settings for, for the deployment. So if you check the environment variables that are passed, uh, I'm defining that there is a token file placed in uh, temp.conf. Also, I'm creating service account that is uh, used when uh, when Randek is started, and you can see it uh, here. So all the containers are uh, created from particular service account, and to be honest, this account is uh, assigned cluster admin role. So uh, you need to be aware that uh, that the user that is uh, running the, the run deck in this Helm chart has, uh, can do anything in the cluster. Uh, and this is needed for running uh, kubectl uh, um, on the whole cluster. You can somehow limit it to, to the particular namespace or whatever you want. Then I also needed to um, configure uh, access control policy because it is too restrictive by default. So I just added uh, another config map, this time with access control definition that is allowing uh, this particular token that I'm assigning all the, all the needed uh, privileges. And the token itself, you need to pass it in the values or just uh, set it somehow. You can generate with some secure random generator and just set it here. And this will be exactly the secret that can be used to access Randek uh, either via Randek CLI or uh, directly in Randek API. And the third change is uh, just adding this extra job that is executed um, after Randek is up and running. So this job will basically wait until API is uh, responding with 200 and then it will run the script that is uh, that I already showed that is defined in values. And uh, as you can see here we are already passing Randek URL and Randek token so, so this job knows everything needed to just talk to the Randek and uh, do some steps there. And that's it.